Hello everyone! Uh, I think I'm coming down with the flu. My head hurts and uh, I'm shivering a bit, but that is no reason uh, not to show you another game uh, from the match uh, Alpha Zero vs Stockfish, as I, I really can't get enough of Alpha Zero, and judging by your comments, uh, you'd enjoy another game as well. Uh, so here it is, this game is absolutely amazing, and uh, once again I must say, what I enjoy about Alpha Zero that it doesn't play like an engine. And it really raises a lot of questions, you know, what if uh, old masters uh, like uh, Adolf Anderson and Paul Morphy actually had it right all along, maybe that is the way to play chess. Uh, but ever since uh, Kasparov lost that uh, match against Deep Blue in 1997, uh, people started thinking that uh, the machines actually play better chess. And now in 2017 you actually have uh, top grandmasters that are trying to play like Stockfish, and then here comes Alpha Zero and says, no, that, that is not the way to play chess. You know, a lot of people analyze games by uh, Anderson, Morphy, Tal, Nejmedino, and they say, ah, that's, that's a bad idea. I mean, okay, he won the game, but Stockfish refuted this. Uh, but we must ask ourselves, uh, did Stockfish really refute this? Uh, would Stockfish be able to refute it if uh, Alpha Zero played that move? That That is the question here. So... I don't know if if uh, if Alpha Zero continues with his uh, chess, uh, we might see a, a totally different uh, chess played uh, in 2018, 19, and 20, and so on. Uh, so this game, I chose this one because it's uh, it's a masterpiece. It's I'm sure you've all heard of uh, Aaron Nimzovich, and uh, Aaron Nimzovich uh, played a very nice game in 19, in 1923 uh, against Friedrich Semish. Uh, they call this game the Immortal Zugzwang game, and it's a game that occurs once, twice in a lifetime, uh, especially uh, when you play against the top grandmaster. Uh, but here, uh, Alpha Zero uh, creates uh, an Immortal Tsugzwan game of its own against uh, Stockfish. And I know, again, uh, it's not the top version of Stockfish. Um, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure very soon uh, people at Stockfish will, will require, um, will demand uh, a rematch as you know they uh, they can just uh, let this uh, go on uh, but until that happens uh, let's uh, let's see this amazing game so uh, alpha zero has the white pieces and uh, knight to f3 was played knight to f6 c4 b6 d4 and e6 again we enter the queen's indian defense and it's very interesting uh, <laughs> over and over deep mind uh, uh, deep uh, alpha zero is uh, uh, playing white and stockfish defense with the queen's Indian defense. Uh, g3, bishop to a6, uh, queen to c2, defending the c4 pawn. c5 now, d5, e captures on d5, c captures on d5, and bishop to b7. And uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, while, while everyone says that uh, that Anderson move or that Morphy move uh, isn't good, uh, stockfish refutes this. Uh, here in this game, there will actually be a move that uh, Stockfish doesn't like. Uh, it's it's pretty much impossible to analyze this game because uh, what are you gonna use to analyze it with? How do you analyze Alpha Zero's moves using Stockfish? Uh, that won't really work. But there is one move in this game which I'm sure you'll you'll enjoy. Uh, bishop to g2. Now knight captures on d5, and here we have uh, castles by Alpha Zero. Uh, knight to c6 and rook to d1, attacking the knight on d5. And here Stockfish plays bishop to e7. Uh, it seems like Stockfish is uh, giving up the knight, but not really. If you capture it, uh, then knight to b4, forking the queen and the rook. Uh, after the queen moves, knight captures rook, but after queen captures g7 and bishop to f6, queen g4, uh, alpha 0 wouldn't really have any compensation for the exchange. Uh, so after bishop to e7, uh, alpha 0 plays queen to f5, a very interesting move. It uh, it does put pressure uh, on the d5 knight, but also it's very interesting. Uh, it kind of, I don't know, It uh, uh, when you start playing chess, uh, you are taught don't move the same piece, piece twice in the opening. You know, you have a lot of undeveloped pieces here. And it seems alpha 0 uh, continues doing this. It's... Uh, uh, it's uh, using the same piece over and over in the opening and somehow achieves an advantage by doing this. So, you know, just something to consider. Uh, queen to f5 and knight to f6 now. Uh, e4, we have g6 attacking the queen, queen to f4, uh, stockfish castles and e5 now. Uh, knight to h5 with a tempo on the queen, uh, queen to g4 and rook to e8. And now knight to c3 developing. And even though... Uh, 
uh, Alpha Zero played already like four moves with the Queen. Uh, he's not be uh, it's not behind uh, in development. Uh, queen to b8 now, uh, and uh, knight to d5, attacking the bishop on e7. Uh, we have bishop to f8 and bishop to f4 now. And this seems like uh, like a very nice uh, moment for Stockfish to eliminate this dark square bishop. It's a strong piece, uh, but if you play uh, knight captures bishop on f4, <clears throat> uh, you get knight to f6 check, and uh, this is terrible for black. Uh, king moves, now you capture the knight, and after rook to e7, as the rook was attacked, uh, queen to h3, uh, going for the h7 pawn, after h5, knight captures on d7 with a tempo on the queen, and uh, black is falling apart. So after bishop to f4, uh, you can't capture the bishop, uh, queen to c8 now, uh, adding protection to the d7 pawn. <clears throat> now h3, uh, we have knight to e7, and knight to e3. Uh, Alpha Zero doesn't want to exchange pieces as the black is cramped in, you know, you don't want to exchange pieces when uh, you control more space. Uh, bishop to c6, adding more protection to the to the d7 pawn because when Alpha played uh, knight e3, uh, it opened up the attack from the rook uh, to the d7 pawn. Uh, rook to d6 now, uh, not, allowing, uh, not allowing Stockfish to push this pawn and uh, even further cramping his position. Uh, knight to g7, we have rook to f6 now, and this is this is uh, astonishing, uh, I mean, <laughs> what a move, uh, you know, if, if a human played this, uh, it would be like, uh, how, how is that rook ever going to get out of there, uh, but alpha 0 isn't worried, uh, queen to b7, uh, we have bishop to h6 now, knight to d5, with a tempo on the rook, uh, knight captures on d5, bishop captures on d5, and rook to d1. Uh, knight to e6, uh, now uh, alpha 0 exchanges bishops, uh, bishop captures on f8, uh, we have rook captures on f8, and uh, queen to h4. And already you can see that uh, uh, when black, when alpha 0 managed to exchange the dark square bishops, now black has some serious weaknesses on the dark squares. Uh, bishop to c6, uh, queen to h6 now, and now there are some there are some ideas of rook captures knight and knight to g5, followed by checkmate on h7. Uh, rook a to e8, <clears throat> and uh, rook to d6 by alpha 0. Uh, it seems like uh, there might be something here if you capture rook captures knight. Uh, but of course, uh, Stockfish wouldn't capture with the rook, and uh, it, it won't capture with the d-pawn. The only move that works for black is f captures uh, on e6. And after knight g5, you simply play rook to e7, and uh, you're fine here. There, there is no compensation for the piece, uh, for the exchange. So after rook a to e8, rook to d6 was played, and now bishop captures on f3, eliminating that knight, so there is uh, no more worry of uh, knight to g5. Uh, bishop captures on f3, and queen to a6. Uh, h4 now, uh, now alpha 0 is rushing that pawn up, up the board to break open the king's position. Uh, queen to a5, we have uh, rook to d1, not allowing queen, queen e1 check. Uh, c4 now, uh, rook to d5, with a tempo on the queen, queen to e1 check, uh, king g2, and now c3. Uh, b captures on c3, queen captures on c3, and h5 now. Uh, rook to e7, uh, bishop to d1, and this bishop to d1 is an amazing move. Uh, Alpha Zero is planning to play bishop to d1 and then bishop to b3 to get the bishop uh, to this diagonal, to i f7. And this this is such a beautiful plan and, and it's wonderful how uh, <clears throat> it's wonderful how Alpha Zero <laughs> uh, can uh, you know make make some such a such a positional move. Uh, bishop to d1 and we have queen to e1 now. Uh, bishop to b3, rook to d8. Uh, protecting the d7 pawn, uh, and rook back to f3. Queen to e4 now, queen to d2, and queen to g4. Uh, bishop back to d1, uh, preparing some nasty discoveries when the rook moves. Uh, queen to e4, and now h6. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see why h6. Uh, knight to c7 with a tempo on the rook, rook to d6 now, uh, knight to e6, and bishop to b3. And in this position, uh, if you analyze it, black is actually threatening to capture the e5 pawn. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you allow Stockfish to evaluate this position, Stockfish is offering rook to d5, 
uh, protecting the e5 pawn and Stockfish says that this is a draw. But Alpha Zero plays a move that Stockfish doesn't even consider. Alpha Zero plays the bishop to b3, uh, allowing uh, Stockfish to grab the e5 pawn and Stockfish uh, immediately grabs it. He says this is bad for white. Queen captures on e5, but now comes rook to d5, attacking the queen. And uh, what, do you, what do you do here? <clears throat> uh, Stockfish evaluates this position again as drawn, uh, plays queen to h8, and uh, what, what are you going to do here? But here is what alpha zero had in mind, and why it sacrificed a pawn. Queen to b4, now attacking this lone rook on e7. Uh, knight to c5 blocking, and uh, here it comes. Rook captures on c5. Uh, B captures on c5 and now ignoring the pawn, but queen to h4. Now attacking the rook uh, and this rook uh, x-ring, the rook behind it, so you do have to do something about this. Uh, rook to d8 and we have now rook to f6. And uh, what, uh, what alpha 0 did with this bishop to b3 maneuver and the pawn sacrifice on e5, uh, it completely locked the black's queen uh, from the game. The queen can never enter the game again. Uh, rook to f8 was played and you have to protect the f7 pawn because the rook is attacking it, the bishop is attacking it uh, and the queen will soon uh, come to attack it. So uh, queen to f4 by alpha 0 and uh, a5 and now we have g4 by alpha 0 and uh, here it is. The, the immortal Tsugzwang is created and this is amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, okay, the original Immortal Zuzwang will always belong to Aaron Nimzovich, but this is uh, Alpha Zero created uh, <laughs> an Immortal Zuzwang uh, against Stockfish. Uh, any move Black plays uh, is bad. Uh, the Queen can't move. The King can't move. Uh, none of the pawns can move. Okay, this one can move, but it loses the game. Uh, none of the Rooks can move. Uh, if either Rook moves, uh, you capture the F7 pawn and you win the game. Uh, any pawn move, a5, c5, or d7 that moves, loses that pawn and it doesn't make sense. Uh, for example, a4, uh, you simply ignore it, uh, bishop to d5, still making it black's move. Uh, black will have to push the pawn, c4 you capture, d5 you capture, and after a3, simply bishop to b3. Again, you achieved nothing, you just gave up two pawns, and still it's black to move, and there is no move to be played here. Uh, you could you could uh, maybe play this rook back and forth, back and forth, but uh, in the end it doesn't work. Simply bishop to c4, uh, the queen will capture the a3 pawn, and then this pawn will march up the board and win the game. Uh, so instead, uh, after this g4 move, uh, d5 was played by Stockfish, uh, bishop captures on d5, uh, rook to d7 now, bishop to c4, a4, uh, g5 now, a3, and queen to f3, again making it a stockfish move, and uh, rook to c7 was played. Now queen captures on a3, because black still can't untangle. Uh, and if you play something like rook back to e7, simply queen back to f3, and again the a pawn will march up the board and win the game. So after queen captures on a3, uh, stockfish decided that uh, you know th this can't go on. And the Stockfish played queen captures on f6, giving up the queen, uh, but this is just, uh, you know, not working. G captures on f6, and now rook f to c8. Uh, we have queen to d3, uh, rook to f8, uh, queen to d6, uh, rook back to c8, and now a4. Uh, and after a4, Stockfish uh, resigned the game. Uh, you can't stop this pawn, the bishop will be supporting it, the queen also, there are all sorts of threats, uh, even if uh, black would give up the rooks for the pawn and bishop, uh, I mean, you're getting checkmated here, there's another pawn here that will break open the king's position, simply uh, too great of a position for white. But uh, this doesn't matter, I mean, uh, after after Stockfish gives up the queen, anyone anyone can defeat it, uh, what, what matters is uh, this g4 move. When Alpha Zero played g4, it created this beautiful immortal Tsugzwang position uh, that uh, immediately reminded me of Nimzovich versus uh, Semish versus Nimzovich, and uh, you know it created it against Stockfish. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, all all comments uh, on this game and the other games by Alpha Zero are more than welcome. Uh, and what do you think? Maybe maybe the old masters had it right all along. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, favoring activity over material is definitely the way to go. 
um, you know, because it's it's very funny that uh, all of today's top grandmasters they imitate stockfish, uh, you know, to to get out of the opening, and then when the position is drawn, they almost always just draw the games. Uh, but uh, it seems like that's not the way to play chess, and maybe maybe Alpha Zero is the answer to chess to stop uh, <laughs> all the draws. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Jason Sidbon and Joshua Jones for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. I will make uh, both of them uh, Alpha Zero versus Stockfish games. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.